Welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 211. We're getting there, gentlemen. We're getting there. This episode's called All the Latest Gaming News, with me, George, this week, joined by Bobby and a returning RGT. They are the very latest news to my Victorian revelation. How's it going, gentlemen? Good. Yeah, very well, thank you. It's nice to see some semblance of the full team. Um, obviously, Seb is in packs, collecting up, hoovering up, like Daniela Westbrook at a Talcum Park spilt party. He is hoovering up all the latest news that we can possibly gather to structure together some sort of interesting rumours, hands-on episode next week. So I'm super hyped for that. Bobby, it looks like it might just be me and you because RGT is frozen. Uh, yes. I what looks like that. a pen in his mouth or some form of small appendage. Um. I don't know. It's probably not his most glamorous look. Let's get into the weeds a little bit, Bobby. Yeah. Was it me and you talking about showering? Yeah. yeah. 62% of people face away from the shower controls. Yeah. Staggering. It is. Um, but you know, those people are those people are clearly wrong. Clearly wrong. Yeah. Talking Nothing's of people that are clearly putting wrong. Putting on full and, blast. Yeah, right exactly. In, face. in your face. Talking yeah. of people that are clearly wrong and like to turn their backs on hot sprays, RGT finally decided to join us. How are you? Very well, thank you. Although I don't Amazing know what that says back. about me and Bobby. You like to get it full on in the face, whereas you just like a little tinkle up your spine. Um, mm. Anyway, we'll let the listeners decide our showering methods and what we make of all that. Yeah. RGT, it, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Isn't Bobby it looking is. well? Oh, he looks amazing. That white T-shirt just sort of actually highlighting how white his eyes are. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's, it's glorious, dude. Fresh-faced, everything. Looks stunning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut back to Bobby for a the latest take on the streets of New York in a second RGT, but what's going on on the hot streets of Ipswich? Um, not a lot at the moment. I've been uh, obviously been a bit busy and missed a few shows. Um, but a yeah, few. plenty gaming wise. Well, two, three, two, three. Keep going. More. Four. He's busy delivering, bro. Well, yeah. we're like on 211 episodes and you've not been on every single one, so you're slacking. So I'm wanting you to record additions to edit into every show ever made. Wow, how the tables are turned. Okay. <laughs> wow, this, this new George is different. <laughs> Listen, you know, I'm coming out the gates. I'm CEO of a mega corporation. Wow, you are coming out swinging. <laughs> I feel... Boy, 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 boy. Thank you, please. I've overreached my <laughs> stay... So I'm going to reverse because your best form of defense is attack. So I'm going to switch, hot foot it over to Bobby. Bobby, your yeah. safe, warming embrace. Tell me what you've seen on the streets of New York. To be honest, it's been a little bit tame, but it's been a little bit dirty. It mm -hmm. feels like uh, RoboCop uh, Detroit streets. Wow. Some of, the, some of the avenues over here. Um, there's a law where the street, the owner of the building, like even a like a the stores fronts have to yeah. sweep up after themselves. Yeah, and I, I guess they all forgot their broom because it's looks like the wild west out there. Wow, wow. it's disgusting. Yeah, and then they have the outside seating, and people are sitting underneath like old magazines and papers and garbage. This is what this is New York. It's unbelievable. I've never seen it so dirty. Looking forward to my next visit. Uh, RGT, how, how do you compare to that? Saw a couple of rats legging it out the back of the social club. <laughs> Funny enough, yeah, I did. Um, yeah, <laughs> New York streets to Suffolk streets is a very different prospect. Mm -hmm. You're lucky if you see a car, let alone rubbish. Yeah, totally Bobby, Bobby has a chariot powered by rats. He flies around the back streets in New York looking like Radagast the Brown from The it's Hobbit. It's like a plague's tail, baby. I'm going down yeah, with the rats. Aren't the New York rats like small dogs? Aren't they <laughs> massive things? New York rats could be easily, I mean, the, the probably the biggest rat I've ever seen was probably like a six-pounder. What? Yeah, 
They're what's pretty that, big. What, what's is that like the size of what a small a Shetland six pony? pounder is probably bigger than a Chihuahua. Mm. I mean, if a Chihuahua and a rat fought, the Chihuahua is definitely dead. Was he called Shredder? Probably he could be. <laughs> That's I don't imagine he's that big. Surely his Bro. name would be Splinter anyway. Come on. Well, Splinter, oh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, you know, it's early. Wrong one. But but um yeah, they're 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 they're, they're their own uh, thing over here. You can't categorize them anywhere else. Mm, that's mad. New York super rat. They're just they're they're they're, they're huge, bro. Like and I if you see, like, just if you see I mean, they could be everywhere. It depends how how dirty your neighborhood is. Mm. Um, but there's been a lot more sightings of them over here in Astoria because they don't. Wow. Then they do this stupid street cleaning rule where you got to move your car every other day of the week. And they sweep the streets. All right, so you're sweeping residential streets. Usually, they're cleaner than the storefront streets. Why don't we focus, mm. you know, our effort there? Yeah. And why don't we start taxing people for not cleaning up their street, the front of their store? Mm, that's crazy. But you know what? It, that is what it is, you know? They're breeding, right? That's a night taken. Matter of fact, if I go for a walk tomorrow morning early, I'll, I'll send some videos to the Discord. About New York City streets. Mm. Yeah. I love these insights. No matter how yeah. visceral they are, I still like to see how the other half live. It's wild. RGT, what's the most exciting meal you've ate this week? I don't know why I said meal. Um, <laughs> what I meant <laughs> to say was meal. <laughs> You'll say pay. I, I'm, slowly morphing meal? Into, I'm just slowly morphing into Bor- uh, UCP's version of Borat. And if you imagine that we're the little version of most podcasts, my version of Borat's going to be pretty low it's rent. <laughs> mm-hmm. <It's really laughs> uh, most exciting meal I had this week, um, me and Mrs. RGT had a movie night the other night, so we got a takeaway and I had some pork, yellow bean sauce and some pork chow mein, and we watched the 2021 Dune. Oh, oh yeah. did Mrs. RGT get some pork? Or yep. did you eat it all? No, no, she had plenty of pork. Um, so yeah, that was uh, we we had a lovely takeaway and loved that film. That was really good. A few people said to me they didn't like it, weren't very good that film, but I absolutely loved it. So I'm Dune is fantastic. Age. Yeah, really good. I enjoyed that. So it sort of got me on an urge to play the uh, the Amiga game. I might have to uh, dust that off and have a go at the game. In a week. cookout at RGT's house, Bobby, would you feast on the pork or would you? Maybe hundred percent, bro. Slow roast it, baby. <laughs> That's what it is. Get them juices flowing in there. Yeah, pork is great, dude. Yeah, definitely. You know, my wife's half Greek. She's also half Dominican, so pork is like a staple over here. Mm. You know, it, pork is definitely slower the better. Yeah, it is. You don't want no hard pork. You want it kind of semi juicy. Exactly. That- exactly. I don't even know what's real and what's not anymore. So let's just get to the to the meat and two veg. Gentlemen, what have you been playing? And I am most intrigued this week to find out what... Um, Bobby, what have you been playing with your week of leisure? Uh, so I uh, got the platinum for a night at the gate of hell. Oh, which is, this is a, your you low know, poly, low poly horror. Yeah, I did that. Uh, thought it was pretty good. Uh, the last, you know, there's two games: there's a nice gate to hell, and then there's um, booty, uh, booty creek cheek freak mission, which yeah. was <laughs> hilarious. I'm not, I'm not personally aware of them, but you've made me aware of these. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty, it's pretty, pretty Pretty hilarious. <laughs> Actually, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, booty creek cheek freak. Say that five I didn't times. know. I didn't yeah. know that was the full title. Oh yeah, it is. It's a little submission. It's um, hilarious. My wife watched it and she wants to know my mental status, and I told her it's fine. <laughs> um, I got the platinum for Cannibal Abduction. This oh, yeah. is more like old school, let's say Resident Evil kind of. I guess best way to describe it. Without you know, you're not shooting really. You're running. It's a hide and seek kind of game. Maybe more like Clock Tower. I uh, thought mm-hmm. it was very good. And then um, the game Mothered, I played a, a long time ago. I finally yeah. downloaded, I guess, the prequel 
which was the Enigma machine, which was very bizarre, very strange. Didn't any didn't understand what I was even playing. Um, I had to look at a guide. To be honest, uh, I was lost. Wow. Very, uh, I don't even know if it's even a game. It's just weird. I can't even describe it. I'll have to try to dis- describe it later on in another episode. And then um, I also got the platinum for uh, No One Lives Under the Lighthouse, mm, which was sorry. like a first person, like a uh, moody setting type of horror game. Like kind of got, like walk got a little weird. Or was there elements? Yeah, it's walking you... simulator. Yeah, yeah. First person, you got to do some tasks, and then every, every day it gets weirder and weirder until you start getting attacked by the creature. It's, okay. it's interesting. And then uh, obviously Hell Divers too. Still enjoying that. And then I started up. Uh, I went rogue. I started playing RoboCop Rogue City. I, I jumped. I jumped the order, but it's okay. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's pretty good. I, I may just want want to watch the movie. To be honest, again, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, a, lot like, people, like, a lot of people are writing that RoboCop. Oh, well, yeah, it's like a see first how person. you can play it badly when you just basically lock on, <clears throat> kill these guys. I mean, it's... what threat is there against RoboCop? Uh, not really. I mean, they got some assault rifles, you know, some grenade launchers, but you're RoboCop, baby. Just bra, bra, bra. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's a, just a fun game. There's nothing serious about it. Yeah, the cutscenes are really good, and I think I think it's an indie game. I don't think it's like uh, made by anybody that I recognize when I loaded it up. Um, but for what they did, they got the atmosphere uh, pretty good. I- I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I have to say I'm surprised, to be honest, which is good. Okay, mm. I'm hyped for that. Uh, I guess I'd better swing around and caress RGT's face. Mm. There you go. What you've really? been playing, RGT? Well, it's been a few shows since I've been on, so sit back, guys, relax, grab a coffee, because uh, there's a little bit of a list here. Um, a few games. Horizon Zero Dawn, that is completed, and along platinum. with... Ooh, nice. No, not platinum. I might go back and platinum it, though, because I did enjoy the game. Uh, and the Frozen Wilds, the DLC, done that as well. Nice. Yeah, I took your advice. I think I said this on the show previous, but took your advice on that. So I went went to the Frozen Wilds when I could. Um, I was about three missions from the end of the game, I think. So then went and done that for a few hours, leveled up, and then came back to the main game to finish off. Um, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, having a few palette cleansers at the minute before I jump into Forbidden West, is it? I believe I always get bundled up with that, but that'll do. Uh, yeah, that'll do. So yeah, so um, yeah, did enjoy that. Um, it was. It reminded me a lot of, I think I've said this before as well, it reminded me a lot of um, Assassin's Creed Origins, the way it's laid out, but just a lot better story. Um, and just a really interesting world. Um, I thought the story was brilliant. Um, and I'd sort of flipped that you're in the future, but the technology was better in the past and all that. You know, I thought it was really good, really enjoyed it. Um, always kept you locked in. Story always kept you locked in. You want to know that bit more. You want to find out more. Um, so, yeah, great game. Um and yeah, pleased you pushed me to eventually finish that, George, because I'd had two or three attempts at it. Um, so yeah, I'm really chuffed I got back into that. Um, I have started uh, Agatha Christie, Hercule Praro on the Switch, the first cases. Um, that was in the, they had an eShop sale a couple of weeks ago, um, and they were dropping prices ridiculous in there. I mean, I paid a, just a few pounds for this. Um, so I've been playing that. That's really good. Um, so you start off as, um, Start off as him when he's uh, just a policeman, do his first case as a policeman, and then as a young detective, and you work your way through finding clues. Then you put you try and put all the clues together in his mind and try and work out who the you know perpetrators are of all these crimes. Um, I love those games. I know they're not for everyone, but they're just good, relax and chill games. Good bit of fun. Good, you know, you can play in a group. Work them out together, or look there, look there, interrogate them, go back, cover yourself, and make sure you've got everything, you know, all in place, ready to try and find out who done it. I really enjoy those. Um, so that's been good. Um, I started playing. Um, oh no, before we go into that, I done finished Halo Three with my uh, brother-in-law. Um, so that's the first three Halos done now. Um, Another warthog chase. Nice. Uh, <laughs> 
No, I can't. Um, I can't remember how it finished. Now it was the other night. It was a bit early yeah, in the morning. The I had a few crafties. Was that one and two? Was the water chase? Did three finish? You know? No, three didn't did it. Yeah. Oh no, it did didn't it? Yes, it did. You had to go on the different platforms as they fell. You are you are correct. <laughs> but yeah, I did. I, I probably think three is my favourite so far. Actually, three um, is the sort of culmination of everything. I think one. I think three's enjoyment is found better through having done one and two. Uh, I mm-hmm. think they're almost required viewing and or playing. And you kind of, do you know what, as you're playing them, they're enjoyable. But three is the culmination of everything. It feels to me like the art style is bang on. It still looks great to this day, the art style they've chosen for three. Um, yeah, yeah. It looks, the, yeah the it visuals looks really good. look good. Um, they did. The story's like right on beat. It feels like a, an evolution of what happened in one and two. Uh, you know, it feels to me like a really nice finishing point on the Halo trilogy. Obviously, it expands, but mm. as a three-game set, that feels really nice. Yeah, it's great. It's good. Yeah, 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 I enjoyed that. Um, they still, on the Master Chief collection, they didn't quite do like the upgraded um, cutscenes like they did on the first one and two, or mainly mm. one, um, but still good. I think it was about nine hours for the story, but I think that's good. You don't always need a... 70 no. 80 hour game that was quite nice and it's yeah. and because i'm because i'm going back to them you don't really want to be chucking tens of hours into a game so it's quite nice to have a game where you you know you can get through them pretty quick so we're gonna once we've got a lined up day off again we're gonna start on halo 4 oh and nice see how we get on with that yeah so we're gonna try and go through them all um i dipped my toe into towers of Arise, um which i think is bandai namco i believe do i need um, that um, have you played Tales games before? This is obviously more of an action one rather than turn based. Some, um, I think you'd enjoy it. Uh, lovely graphics, um, quite good combat, um, interesting story. Um, I've only played a couple of hours because another game dropped through my door, my letterbox, which was Expeditions, as you know, George, which is the follow on from Snow Runner. Um, and nothing else has had a look in since then. Oh, wow, so, yeah, so. Providing I've had this game about 12 days, I suppose, two weeks maybe, of, I'm pushing 50 hours in it. So that's <laughs> good. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. That is that's a very, a chunk very good right game. There. Yeah. That's, and I didn't think I'd played it that much. But the hours soon went up, get back from work, a couple of hours, you know, shower, tea, come back, another couple of hours, and that all start mounting up. But yeah. Really good. If you enjoyed SnowRunner, which is not for everyone, they're a bit of a niche game, bit of a you know selective market there. But if you enjoyed SnowRunner, then I think Expeditions is a must. One thing I've got to say is I was playing SnowRunner the other day on PS5, and you know the jobs, there's a couple of jobs <laughs> on there specifically that I remember me and you really struggling with. Mm-hmm. I just blitzed them on me any of the night. Yeah, and you'll find out if you play Expeditions. You've got people who come into Expeditions who haven't played SnowRunner will struggle big time. If you've played SnowRunner, you get to learn the rules. You get to learn the vehicles. You get to learn the terrain. You know what you can and can't do. And you've, and if you go into Expeditions, you, you start off in this first area where you have five missions, which is like your prologue area. You'll blitz through them because you, you've played SnowRunner. You know what you're doing. You'll be there. You know how the train works. Um but it's got so many added benefits in expeditions. Um, like I think we were talking in the week. Um, obviously, when you do river crossings, because this is more of a four before game than a truck game, although you do have trucks, but you you predominantly be in uh Colorado and the Rocky Mountains working your routes out. You've got a drone, so you can lift your drone up, unblock clog the map with the drone, so you can then plot your route a bit better. You'll have missions where you use the drone to scout an area or scan rivers for fish or scan. There's all different things you can use it for. Um, added benefits to your truck. You have sonar, so you can see how deep the water is to find your river crossing. It's very um, death stranding, that bit. Yeah. Um, you have your tyre pressures. So if you're struggling to get up a rocky bank, you can lower your tyre pressures, which then get you out of grip or crossing a river. Um, you have got anchor points which if you ain't got nowhere to winch to, to pull yourself up, you can drop an anchor point, winch to that, pull yourself up, which is quite good. But all this is, yeah, but all with that is there's limitations because 
each truck will have a certain amount of slots that you can put these in. So if you don't, if you run out of anchor points, you run out of anchor points. You know, you've got jacks as well. So if you roll over, you can use a jack to level yourself and put yourself back. So it's, it's things like that which are which are helpful. But you find with some of the harder missions or very hard missions, if you're in a truck, which when they're not fully upgraded are quite hard to take, but also your fuel. You'll see a mission and that will say it's 6,000 metres or whatever, and you've got three and a half thousand metres of fuel with all your upgrade and extra fuel slots filled. So you'll have to find airdrops en route, detour to airdrops to keep filling yourself up with fuel to get there. So there's a bit of planning that goes in. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm about, I think there's 79 expeditions so on there. And it, so I've if Snowrunner is the Bloodborne, is this the Elden Ring of driving games? <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> I don't, that's hard for me to to say because a lot of so I think me and you putting a lot of hours into SnowRunner, um, you you you're equally at home in it, and it, it almost feels to start with it almost feels too easy because you've got your anchor points, you've got your jacks, you've got your sonar, mm. you know, areas where that, that'll just highlight a, a yellow circle on the map and say, investigate the area. But when I first done it, I thought, oh, I've got to drive around all here. It took ages. But you don't have to. You just park up, get your drone out. But mm. also on here, you've got um, party members you can add to your truck. So, for instance... Oh, I've heard about the, this. You can add, like, yeah. specialists. Specialists, yeah, that's it. Um, so, like, if I'm on what I will do... If I'm on one where I've got to investigate an area, I take this lady with me, and what she'll do by having her in your truck, your drone will go an extra 200 metres. Mm. So when you've got to use your drone to clear an area, you ain't got to keep moving your truck because you get out of range. You can nearly do it in one go because of that. If you're on a really watery bit, you can take this, uh, um, I can't remember what the specialist is called, this operator who specialises in rivers and lakes, but then that'll make your truck, um, oh, I won't take no damage from water. So if you get your depth, so you can add all these little bits to the missions, so you can fine tune them to to where you're going, um, and I just find it really addictive. I mean, some of the missions I've done on there are three hours long. They've taken me to do. Oh damn! Oh yeah, three hours. Yeah, I've had to go one of my. So this is very in depth, obviously. Then. Yeah, I had to go through three maps. You have to go to the tunnel, which, and then get through another map, find airdrops, keep three fuel, and make sure you've got enough supplies. I mean, you can take spare parts with you, so if you see. The, uh, there'll be these yellow squares and that'll say a bridge and if you've got enough spare parts you can make the bridge go across so then you haven't got to go round and that bridge will stay there so you can you can upgrade the area as you go as well there's a little bit of base building involved um haven't done too much of that i haven't really seen the benefits of that yet but there's there if you need it um but yeah overall um absolutely Let, let's simmer this down into a yes or no is this a george <laughs> game Without doubt, yes, hundred mm. okay. percent. And if you buy it, and you turn around to me and say, oh, "RGT, this is rubbish," you're dead to me. So, wow, yeah, right. Next game. Wow. <laughs> um, I had another. What was more? Ra- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, random. Uh, me and my brother also had a bit of a random night of a few beers, <laughs> and we played World Cup golf on the Sega Saturn. Um, which that was good fun. Puts a few graphically puts a few PS1 golf games to shame. It was actually looks really good. It was a bit awkward to play at first, but great fun. And another one ticked off on our random rounds of golf that we play. But yeah, that's good fun. If you've got a sat off, you pick it up for a few pounds. That's not expensive. That's a good fun game to have if you if you like golf and got Sega Saturn. Mm. And finally, last one, boys. Deep sigh, relief, relax. I'm nearly done. Um, went round board borders. We had a same again, a few crafties, and we played Slaps and Beans on the Switch. He'd downloaded it from the sale. So um, that's that beat em up game? The beat em up game, yeah. Um, I'm not familiar. I think was Slaps and Beans a TV show originally, I think. Was it in the 70s or something? I'm not quite oh, sure. Oh, maybe, about yeah. Didn't we have it in Stingray's Boots some time ago? And uh... Yeah, I think in um, Bad Abinkster, a big fan of this, I believe. I think so. I think so. Um, it's definitely like yeah. an English thing, right? Um, I'm not sure now. I think might be Italian. Sure. Yeah, I think it's Italian. I think. Um, Ooh, but anyway, the, the game's really good fun. Um, you play as the two protagonists from the you know Slaps and Beans. Um, it's good, real good 
16 bit looking graphics, side scroll and beat them up. You know, it's got that terrible acting and silly story that just adds to it, really. Um, I think he only picked this up for a few pounds in the sale, but yeah, if you like nice. beat them up, side scrolling, brilliant. Give it a go. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think when we had it, yeah, I heard it about it, it um, mm. tongue in cheek, and then it ended up reviewing reasonably well. And I was like, who is this Slaps and Beans? Was it, oh, am I right? Were they two American guys, but their show was. Um, in a, in Italy or was really big in Italy or something. I don't I'm know. Not, I mean, I'm not quite sure. So fascinating. I'm, I'm sure we'll get community corrections yeah. on slaps and beans left, right, and Chelsea. But yeah, bad things to give us a little uh, bio mm-hmm. on that, so we know what it is. But yeah, definitely the game's brilliant fun. If you like old school beat 'em ups, brilliant. Um, oh, that's me done by the way. Okay. Well, let me quickly get my. I feel like I can't even have a couple of minutes to talk about my own gaming expertise. With... Uh, we went Sorry. deep on expeditions there, didn't we? My goodness yeah. gracious me! I, when you finished talking about expeditions, I even had sand in my teeth. <laughs> but we were on an expedition. We well. were. Yeah, we were. We were learning about that expedition, bro. Let's, to plan for, the, let's, to let's, plan let's for an expedition. Off, let's. Well, let me take you on an expedition through my gaming uh, activity. Let, let's first off stop off at Portal. Uh, I've got it working seamlessly. I thought I had before, but I was wrong. You did it now. Oh, I had a little preview the other day, and oh, that does look a nice bit of kit. Well, it's say. working now. Anywhere. Mm. Um, if anyone gets one, they want to talk about how to make it work a bit better in the house and outside the house when you're away, get them a DMs. I'm all over it. Um, no, I've been, I've been enjoying using that. I've been using it to sort of grind through some Yakuza. I seem to have got myself stuck in a fight. Race Space Monkey, if you're listening. Namba. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell, bro? What the hell's going on here? Uh, so I don't what, too hard that. or you can't get past it? Or? I find I get myself in these states with JRPGs. I keep rolling through and, and maybe brute force them away through some fights by just having an extreme amount of health items in my inventory so you can normally get through even a pretty hideous boss fight if you've got enough health stuff so i just grind my health items through but i've hit a bit of a brick wall here one of the guys got particularly brutal attack gunshot which literally is him shooting a gun at you which is as fatal as you can imagine and that's makes that part pretty tough Again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If this wasn't turn based and it was traditional Yakuza, I could have rocked with my same strategy of having like 40 health items and just wailing on this guy one punch at a time while healing myself in the pause mm. menu just to obliterate him. Part of How do you find Yakuza. it being turn based? Does it suit the game or do you miss the. Live I action? miss the ability to rock up to a fight, know that the guy's way more powerful than me, and being able to just wail on him while while sipping stamina royale in the background and then keep wailing on him. Mm. Um, It's a pretty good strategy, but it's one that doesn't work so well in the turn base. So I've been off leveling. I've leveled up my business and got myself a load of money, which I then blew on uh, crap, I have to admit. If that's (laughs) Swars, apologies, everyone. Um, But, yeah, no, it's I'm, I'm still enjoying it. You know, it's made me focus on some of the side activities, most of which I can't access because (laughs) I'm in the end game of this chapter nine. So pretty much the rest of the town is closed. So there's not really that much to do. So it's a bit frustrating, but I'm making it work where I can. Um, Been playing some Uncharted 3, probably a third of the way through that. That's been enjoyable. I think I might have said last week that I finished Alan Wake, so that's that done. I thought I owned... Alan Wake 2, but for some reason I must have just bought the trial. I don't even know. I, went I thought to you said you had Alan Wake 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I and then when I went you said through, you bought that. Oh, I swore I did as well. But then when I went through all my PlayStation invoices, no mention of Alan Wake 2. Oh, I could weird. have sworn it popped up that it was on sale for something ridiculous like $24, £24. I thought, mm. oh, I'll buy that. And then when I get finished on one again, I'll do them back to back seamlessly. Yeah, I think that's what you told me in a message. I'm sure you said you'd bought it on mm-hmm. sale and you were going to yeah, finish I thought one I bought and then... it, but apparently I don't own it. 
So, and I was never invoiced for it. So I don't know what happened. I don't know how it got added to my library. Something similar happened all the way back in the dim and distant past when I used a trial on Formula One 2017 or something daft. It downloaded the whole game. I thought I hadn't downloaded the whole game. Now I want to go and check on it. I did download the whole game. I don't know what's going on. And frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. You know, I'll get to Alan Wake when I get to Alan Wake. Uh, MLB dropped for the most part. Really enjoyable. Haven't dug into Road to the Show. I need to do my face scan. Annoying that I can't use last year's face scan, but I got a face scan all over again. Um, which is hilarious because when you play Road to the Show, you start as an 18 year old kid. So if you're me and you face scanning yourself, it doesn't really work as well, does it? Be honest with the storyline. So. Mm. Yeah, we will see. Um, I mean, you know, put some cheek makeup on and then, you know, make yourself a little bit younger. Then face scan myself, yeah. Stick a load of sellotape on yeah. my cheeks and then wrap my head in it just to pull me skin back a little bit. Oh, God. Yeah. I look like or a, take an old photo of like, yourself guys? and put it to the scanner, you know? If I pull my Find a picture when like you're that, younger. I look like an axiotl. Evolution in witness there. You know, I'm only one face pull away from being the primordial progenitor, the axiotl. I mean, that's... Can't wait for the AI images of that to come out. George from the Unofficial Controller podcast head on an axiotl. Wow. Uh, Tuesday in the Discord. <laughs> um, what else have I been paying? And that's... Probably it to be fair uh yeah it's not been that busy i've just been sinking myself into yakuza and just grinding it really just to, and then keep saving and grinding and saving how but far you into yakuza chapter nine probably i haven't looked actually maybe halfway just under mm, halfway okay. maybe i i don't know probably not even a third of the way now in my look um I just really want to play this infinite wealth to see if it's as good as people say it is, but I'm mm. I'm damned if I'm skipping this to get to that. Is that the newest because, one? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, really good there's reviews, an inter- there's an interstitial one be called called the man who changed his name or something like that, which I probably will get, and then we'll also import the um, play Asia. This mm. <laughs> <laughs> sealed showing you on the shelf. Anyway. They didn't come here to hear what I've been playing. They didn't come here to find out about Robbie, uh, Bobby riding round uh, New York back streets on a rat like a cowboy. What they came here for was for me to say, you see, pay, yeah. He's <laughs> like the lone <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's give it the justice it deserves. Sometimes I feel like Oh, he's going from the start. <laughs> I will cut. We'll cut straight to this. Our GT is like the Lone Ranger riding on down. Bring hidden gems to me. Oh, wonderful! I love hearing that again. But I love doing it. I don't know why. <laughs> but today it was a challenge. RGT, what is this hidden gem? Can me and Bobby play the guessing game or no? You can. That's a bit of a tough one because we are going old school retro here. Going back, this one's for all the collectors in the Discord. So I'm taking it back a bit. So this is. What decade? Um, this is 90s, just Ooh. in the 90s. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is 1990. This is developed by Titus. Arcade. Operation Wolf. It was published by two. Nope. It was by published by two companies, Sega and Amstrad, because it was only on two systems. It was. It's a racing slash shoot 'em up. Chase HQ. Nope. And the version I. I played and still play because I really enjoy it. Is on the master system. That's is Chase HQ close? No, it's it's um, 
been referred to as a uh, took inspiration from Chase HQ. I don't think you'll get it. It's a random name. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you like video games, podcasts, and reminiscing? I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. I definitely do not did not get it. Do you give up? It wasn't on the Genesis either. Nope. This is this was oh, on the Sega Master System, and funnily enough, the Amstrad GX four thousand. Then I'm definitely out. Yeah, you'd never. You'll very do very well to find a GX four thousand copy. So it's Master System, which you can get as yeah. and as arcade. Probably do have it emulated, but not like it wasn't here to be released. I probably wouldn't know mm. about it. You got an idea, George? No. Right, I'll tell you what it is. It is Fire and Forget Two. Fire and Forget Two. Fire and Forget Two. I, I the so there was an original. There was didn't just I, the but sequel. I just didn't mm. get my finger in. The, the first one was right back on the eight bit computers, ZX Spectrums and stuff, and then they released the second one, which actually got quite a high acclaim. It's a, a very good game. Um, it's as has, has got that classic story from the era. Um, you've got to stop a terrorist attack at the third international conference for peace in Metropolis. Um, and you have to eventually reach and destroy the lead vehicle called Life Thirsty, which has a nuclear weapon on board. So you basically, this is a... What's the vehicle um, called? Uh, the vehicle you've got to destroy is called the Life Thirsty. And the vehicle you are <laughs> driving is called Thunder Master 2. <laughs> So good they made it to Thunder Master 2. Thunder Mass. Yeah, well, apparently so. Um, but this is like, it, it looks very much like an outrun style game. Um, so you're sort of looking into the road from a you know third person view of your car. You have uh, weapons, but you also have to collect fuel as you go along. So you'll, you'll get rid of certain enemies, which are like uh, uh, motorbikes, vehicles, cannons on the side of the road. You'll destroy these. Um, Controls are very good. It runs very smooth. Looks awesome. Great speed. Um, but after you you can fill up your fuel, like I say, but also after a while you'll get red canisters, which are kerosene. And if you fill the kerosene levels up, you can then fly. So then it turns into like a shooter from behind as well. Um, so it's quite different. It's very addictive. Um, that's a good, uh, decent difficulty curve. So it's not Video too hard. Video games were crazy, weren't they? They were mad, yeah. This is completely Back then, mad. They're wild, such, bro. It's such good fun. This is like something you'd find in an arcade and, you know, drop 50p in and play back in the 80s, 90s. It's so, such good fun. Um, and like I say, for a mass system port, only an 8-bit system, very little flicker. You don't get much cross-colour. Looks really good, very quick, plays well, great controls. Um, it's got some parallax scrolling that looks really good. Um, you have... The, you have to push the up button for accelerate, but then once you're up to speed, you can let go and then back for slowing down, if you know what I mean. But you don't need to do that too often. Hmm. Um, and I just, and this game at the moment, if, if is that if because patient, of Master System, the other two buttons are taken up with other requirements, therefore, speed is almost cruise yeah. control. So you got you got um, your machine guns on A, and you've got missiles if you press A and B, which are like a guided missile, which you which you can fill up as you go along. Which reminds me of Mortal Kombat on the Game Gear, where you had to press, or even on the three button pad, where you'd have to press start to access another row like, of keys. Yeah, like Street Fighter Two on the Mega Drive, if you only had a three button pad, yeah, to kick you had to press start and then use the buttons, didn't you? So, <laughs> Which was yeah, absolutely disastrous. So just get a six button pad. Um, but yeah, it's five levels, which is decent for Mars system. So it's you know it's a decent length game for that. 
Um, I think it looks really good graphically. And like I say, if, if you're patient, you could probably pick this up for between 12 and 20 pound. There's some round about 25 pound for sale. Some people are asking silly money. Um, but it's, it is definitely a hidden gem on the master system and great fun to play even today. So yeah, give it a go. Fire and forget too. It looks, it looks really good actually. Mm, it's great fun. Yeah. Brilliant game. Really good game. I just found it by chance. I think I found it in, it must have been six, seven years ago at the London video game market. Just saw the cover, thought the artwork looked great fun. I picked it up for next to nothing. And yeah, this is the it. very definition of a hidden gem. I like it. It is. One. This is really mm. good. Yeah. The, just... the main act, the main, the main character on the screenshot I see here looks like uh, Kyle McLacken, whatever he pronounced his name. <laughs> Can't pronounce oh, yeah. His name. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. Yeah. Was it was it was it was it an arcade game as well? Um, I believe that might have been. I believe the original might have been an arcade, which was this then ported amazing. to it the eight great, micros. And then Far and Forget 2, they then done on the for some reason they done Mars System 2 and the Amstrad GX four thousand, which wasn't a very good port. It's rare as hen teeth, you'll never see it. So just get the Sega Mars System version. It's about a yeah, tenth of the I'm price and play way better. This looks great. Yeah, yeah, it's good, great fun game. That's one of them where you think it's a bit hard at first, but it's so addictive and it plays so well, you just want to keep getting that bit further. Bobby um, was meant to be working through his backlog. He's now going to spend the rest of his sort of time off playing this absolute master system. Something in, in, in a buffer, you know, this is, could be a good one. What <laughs> happened there? You were buffering then. I was, I was <laughs> buffering out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, RGT, for highlighting that there's another game that we all need to play, as if we didn't have enough games that we all needed to play. The just keep adding to that in. list. Literally. <laughs> yeah, just keep adding to that list. <laughs> I love it, and hopefully everyone loved it as well. So no doubt, if they want to check it out, Hidden Gems on the Discord is a place to go. Before we get to we tear into the news, one thing me and RGT were talking about off air, and Bob, we're going to need your help with this if if we could, please. Um, is that the the Discord is severely? This is our call to arms this week, okay? Because at the minute on the Discord, we've got a program running with whoever brings the most new users in before the end of the month is going to get a £50, $50, €50, Euro, 50 reals, whatever it is. We've got worldwide listeners. You're going to get the equivalent of £50 sterling as a gift voucher for your console of choice. All you've got to do is bring people to the Discord. But in another effort to... Uh, we're listened to across the whole of the world, okay? And we talk about countries that we're we're featuring each and every week but the one country that seems to be lacking is in its representation on the discord is the wonderful united states of america and i've got no idea why it's our second largest international audience bar bobby and seb and mikey does wrestling who may be canadian who even knows right severely underrepresented in the discord so bobby this is my chance to ask you in the mother tongue of these silent but violent listeners. So right now, there's a dude walking down the back streets of Sacramento. He looks across. He sees his burger joint. He's thinking, hang on, this guy's almost talking to me. Bobby, channel this guy. Channel them in their thousands and tell them it's time to represent the greatest country on God's given earth, in their opinion, on the Discord. Um, yes, join the Discord if you're listening from America. We we'll really appreciate it. We have, <laughs> we have, um, we have to get more people than the English viewers because we have more people in New York than England. So we have to gather the masses and become the biggest listening group nation of the U. See, pay. I want. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do it, guys. Want, I would love the Americans to come on mass and take over yeah. the whole Discord. And the other flip side of it is, me and RGT were discussing the 
because of the time difference, mm. while we're asleep, the Americans can be raising hell on the Discord. And then when we wake <laughs> up in the morning, we're just yeah. going to see a stream of a thousand messages where you guys have rained hell. You've talked about why things aren't available for breakfast in McDonald's menu in California, but they mm-hmm. are in New York. I want to see all that happening in the Discord. What else do we need to say or do to bring the Americans in other than if this was a war, you would be on the verge uh, of Well, losing. you know what? It could be because we are we are underrepresented right now and we could be taken over. And as you all know, <laughs> we don't want that here in America. Well, we that's what I'm trying to that. say to the Americans. Yeah. What's wrong with you? We got if there's a championship, there. if we there's a get war, in there. you need to be in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you need to be representing. Right now, at the moment, you were all getting literally laughed out of town. If this was a war, you yeah, just turned can. up with water pistols. You've got nothing. Yeah. Okay? So turn up en masse. If you think you're big and you think you're hard, you, you're Americans, okay? I'm going to do my hardest. To, do it. To, to get in there. I promise. It's not It's not you. You're there. I will. It's your I, I will. I will, will rally the troops. They sent you over the top of Iwo Jima, mm-hmm. armed with nothing but a, they have. a chocolate dagger in the red hot Asian sun, and that's it to face down the screaming masses. That's is that America? Because I thought you brothers backed each other up, but so far they're not doing diddly squat. Right now we did. I we're gonna like... make we're gonna make a, a championship and call it the World Championship, but only America participates. We're gonna win it. <laughs> Fine. I'll set I'll set up a channel in the Discord so you can all understand each other with your English American that you talk. Mm-hmm. I uh, right right now, okay, with the way mm-hmm. the Discord is right now, I feel like I could take an American straight. Yeah. I don't even really know how to do the high school wrestling, but I just clean and jerk someone. Snap. Spaff. It's everywhere. All right? Done it. Yeah. Broke it chop, be tombstone, hard to get off. Dead. Yeah. Uh, so after that rousing, rabble rousing thing, if you're an American, you listen to this show and you're not in the Discord, you're not just letting me down, you're not just letting Bobby down, but you're letting the whole goddamn US of A down. The red, white, and the blue. baby. Let's get in there. Do it for your country. Your country wants you to. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Wow, I a think rise in speech. <laughs> you got to rise Something up, like you know? <laughs> Wow. Just sprinkle a couple of Uncle Sam's in there. Job done, okay? Job done. I want you for the UCP. <laughs> C- you consider this your Discord harbour. If you don't, if we haven't mm-hmm. awoken a sleeping giant now, yeah, you, you, you don't even deserve to be awake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. get, get in there. So come and slap this English noise out of my mouth, okay? Well, I mean, we even hire specific, you know, presenters for that geographic area. How do they repay us? Mm. We even got seven packs at the moment, but... And what's it worth? Yeah? Mm. Where's mm. your American hospitality? I was expecting yeah. to be tucked up in bed with a... Blue-eyed, blonde-haired American beauty feeding me apple pie and whatever else off her ample bosom. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clear that up. Yeah, I'm anyway. glad that's made it clear. Yeah. But what am I getting instead? I'm getting a half-eaten chip off a New York street rat's chest, mm-hmm. and, he, and he is called Pedro. So I don't even think he's American. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if, if you want to help me sort that out, you get in the Discord. It's time get for the news. So scout the very darkest region of the internet to bring you the latest stories. First up... Oh, this made sense when I wrote it, but Shadows cast light on a new remaster. Shadows of the Damned launched during a fantastic part, fascinating part of the PS3 era, where EA, <laughs> would you believe, suddenly started publishing smaller titles like this is one of Bobby's favourites, the equally iconic Alice Madness Returns, 
The business model didn't last so long, but we're still grateful for the, for the aforementioned third-person shooter, which was co-designed by industry icon Suda51 and Shinji Mikami. And this previously reported it's getting a PS5 and PS4 remastered due out later this year. The release appropriately subtitles Hell Remastered, sounds like something out of Life is Strange, promises to take players on a wild ride with Demon Hunter, Garcia Hotspur, bit of a top one fan, <laughs> wow. As it... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a name. What a name. As he kicks demon ass and makes his way through the darkest depths of hell. Sounds like an afternoon with my subconscious. Lighting up the darkness with his burning passion <laughs> on this you to rescue his true love from an insidious demon king. Uh, yeah. Uh, the original game had truly bonkers moments, like one chapter where you needed to use your big boner, a.k.a. a snape sniper rifle, I wanted to call it a sniper rifle. I don't know. It's a it's a gun. I was going to call it Slytherin snag. <laughs> that, but then you, you changed it, and I kind of got it confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you you use your big boner to take out a giant <laughs> demon lady. It was pretty uh, hard. There's no specific release date for the remaster just yet, but uh, you can add the title to your PlayStation wish, wish list. Will you be revisiting this cult classic? Let us know in the Discord, America. <laughs> um, did anyone actually understand what that game is about? What Shadows of big, the Damned, or well, it was Big Boners Garcia Hotspur. I'm like, what is going on here? Yeah. That sounds crazy. That game. I it does. I brought it here because it smelt, tasted, and looked exactly like a game that Bobby would design in a fever dream. Mm-hmm. And wow, if this is screaming. Bobby's next platinum. I don't know what is. And neither do I. Are you getting this? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I gotta you, do a little you, bit well, more. let me put it this way. You're contractually obliged. Until your then, countrymen show up... Then I'll get it. I'll get it done. And, and, and free you. You are now in Discord jail. Man, I bet what's the bet there's a trophy for that game where you've got to get a thousand shots with your big boner. Man, it shouldn't be too hard for me. I <laughs> I I I dream that there's a trophy. I couldn't leave that. That's a proper US UCP news, that is, isn't it? The big mm-hmm. boner. That era of EA being a little bit nuts. I remember Shadow of the Damned at the time, and it it was crazy then, but linked to those Big icons. It's definitely a game that uh, deserves attention. It's definitely a game that should be on Bobby's radar. It's mm. a game that's probably already in the description. Way too hard for me. Um, that's a game, sort of game that's that mad. That's a bit intriguing, isn't it? That's that crazy. You just think, hmm. You getting this? Look at that. I don't, I don't know. I'll say Bobby get on first. Well, Bobby's not allowed to play any other games. I mean, I'm gonna get in, to, I gotta until get to the American out. Discord army turns up. It's it, it's done. I've been sort of more into driving four before vehicles, not waving a big boner around. So we'll see. Some people have never had that experience. A boner? Four yeah. by four driving's quite elitist. It's walled off. Do you know what oh, I mean? The machines yeah. are expensive. The environment to actually take the vehicle and push it to its limits. Hmm. Is not yeah, easy definitely. to find. Um, maintenance of the vehicle can't be cheap. Tires are expensive. Exactly. Replacement, you know, parts, fuel. We're in an mm. energy crisis. Mm, true, but very true. Seemingly whopping out a big boner and blasting a giant demon, ladies, ten a penny. Mm. Yeah, it must be apparently. What's I'd buy that for a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Uh, Good God, what does this show become? He's basically like... It's like a version of Carry On that they never dared air. <laughs> yeah, the After Hours Carry On. If it's such a thing, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> That's basically Confessions of a Window Cleaner, which I don't think we're too far removed from, if I'm honest with you. No, it's Confessions of a Postman. Postman always knocks twice. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Next bit of news. <laughs> Do you want me to take this one? 
we fight for it between you. I've done my bit. I'm ready to clock off. Yeah, I noticed. Um, cra- <laughs> crash for Hire. Last month, for the surprise announcement, the Crash Bandicoot and Spyro developer, Toys for Bob, revealed it would be going indie, um, but would continue to work closely with Microsoft in the future. Now, according to a new exclusive from Jess Corden of Windows Central, the two parties have apparently reached an agreement for a new game. This information was reportedly shared at a recent town hall meeting. The Xbox's game content division representative Matt Booty supposedly confirming the agreement and mentioning how it would be similar to Toys for Bob's previous games. Jess Corden, Windows Central. During a recent town hall meeting, described to us as sources uh, familiar with the event, Matt Booty, now leading Xbox's game content division, reportedly said that an agreement had now been reached between Xbox. I've already read that bit. And Toys for Bob in the first game. Well, he did <laughs> say, it's quote. It's because it's a quote. Yeah, I did say something along the lines of, um, I am paraphrasing, it will be similar to games Toys for Bob has made in the past. Microsoft now owns Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, which sounds strange for a start. Um, and Toys for Bob has already made some subtle, uh, I can never say that word, references subtle. to Spyro and subtle references to Spyro in its independent announcement, asking fans to keep their horns on and eyes out for future announcements. And that, do, you, do you guys find that weird, um, Crash and Spyro being under the Xbox wing? You know, when you think of the originals? I know, you know, games change companies and they change hands. Yeah, I, I maybe has, you know, yes, originally it was on PlayStation, but let's not forget we've seen Spyro and Crash pop up on everything from an Engage to the original Xbox oh, yeah. and everything. Game Boy Advance between, and so stuff, were not they? But... You've really got to be getting in your retro way back machine to... Yeah. I mean, yes, I suppose if you close your eyes, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, you initially and immediately associate with PlayStation, but their first trilogies on those consoles must have been such a high watermark for the franchises because of neither of them have ever really been able to move on. Mm-mm. No, true. Even no, in their true. latest adventures, you know, Spyro got... <sighs> Spyro basically got wrapped up in some sort of illegal sort of cartel of gaming and basically got himself hauled out as an accessory for a load of bloody tat, didn't he? Skylanders. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Spyro was shined up, turned into a piece of plastic tat and lorded up on a load of glow-in-the-dark platforms that you plugged into your Wii, your Engage, your PlayStation, your Xbox, your PC, everything in between. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bit of a shame. Return to form for these characters, do you think? Toys for Bob? What's left for them to do? Because obviously they've remade the first three games from both of them. Do they now start revisiting some of those shadier PS2 games? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's for or me. Is it I don't time know for a new game can... in the vein of the original, a bit like Sonic Mania, perchance? Yeah, maybe. I mean, is there? I mean, I suppose they still like, obviously do their market research. It must be uh, core fans out there of Crash and Spyro, I suppose. I don't know, but I, I mean, suppose I a spreadsheet from 1996 is. exists today that proves that Crash Bandicoot might make money. I don't know. You know what these people are like. I think the because they done a Crash Four, didn't they? Did they do Crash Four on the yeah, PlayStation? Yeah, they did. Yeah, which was and, and in I think the style was... of the classics, but done in the modern style. So it's yeah, and I think supported. that was quite popular, weren't it? So whether they've, they've gone off those sales figures and thought there's still something there to um, carry on, but yeah, we'll see. Be interested to see what they come up with. Bobby, do you have good memories of Crash and Spyro back in the day, or were they too small a boy for you, and you wanted to pull someone's head off and? play their spinal column like a xylophone no i never played crash uh loved spyro okay because i played my i played my little sister and i got the remake which i thought was really well done yeah but i think that's as far as it's gonna go okay so you're not you're not jumping up to grab yourself a copy of whatever this is no spyro's due to go through an angsty teen phase isn't he you know, can't get him out of his bedroom, plays a bit too much Fortnite, doesn't really care that the dragons have been sort of taken away and turned into to diamonds all over his local home. He ain't bothered. As long yeah, as someone tired brings of that in as some well. prime and yeah. <laughs> sour patch kids, you know, he's, he's buzzing, isn't he? He is. 
When was the last time Spyro <laughs> tidied his room? Oof. That's a good question. question. Yes. It's a little bit. You've <laughs> probably both given it far more attention than it deserves, to be honest. It was a throwaway comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually thinking, trying to think. Well, yeah. I don't know. Leonard's guy, you know, and and you know, as he develops into a full dragon and develops his full on fire breathe, does that become more of an issue, or do you just, you know, what really goes on there? <laughs> I mean, this teenage is angst is a, is a real thing, you know. So That's he has to be thinking. careful. Because if he gets aggravated one day, like, you know, I'm tired of this, and just puff, ooh, fire. Hang on a minute. Let's think about this. When did Spyro come out? I think he's technically in his 20s. He came out, well, the game came out more than 20 years ago. Has to be. It was, what, late 90s? So a bit like Game Boy Matty, uh, Ode Spyro's got a mortgage, probably a couple of kids on the way. He's probably gone and got himself a car he can't afford the payments on, but mm-hmm. as long as he gets his overtime, it's all gravy. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's all gravy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a missus. Don't know if it's serious or not. I mean, bit of a player, to be fair. Bobby, I imagine this... Spyro being a player. <laughs> yeah, but you're thinking a young Spyro. You ain't seen him lately. Well, yeah. He's 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 massive. He he's certainly uh he's certainly finding the uh off road <laughs> capabilities of four by four. That's all I'll say. Oh yeah. Hey. What's he <laughs> What's this American? Up next in the news. Yes. <laughs> we have the legend of Tinseltown. Ooh. Um Hollywood is adapting Nintendo's Legend of Zelda series into a live-action movie. And while there's plenty of excitement about the upcoming film, there's also some concern. Uh, Yes. With this in mind, the film's director, Wes Ball, known for his Maze Runner trilogy, has has told Total Film, he now understands just how important the Zelda franchise is to fans and aims to fulfill people's greatest desires. He's also provided to fans an idea of what to expect, explaining how he wants it to be a serious and a real movie while offering a sense of escapism. The, the, uh, that's the thing I want to try to create. It's to get the feel like something real, something serious and cool, but fun and whimsical. Back in December, the Zelda live action director mentioned how he wanted the film to feel a bit like a live action Mazaki movie, referencing studio uh, Gilby, can't pronounce that, uh, works like Spirited Away. Uh, Ball also mentioned, uh, no, a Ball also mentioned at the time that he's a big fan of the Zelda series. Um, earlier this year, Sony CEO chimed in, noting the Zelda movie would deliver an amazing tale of discovery, of adventure and discovery. Apart from Russ Brown's involvement, it's been confirmed that Nintendo's Sajuri Mayamato has been working with producer uh, Avi Arad on the film, with Sony co-financing the pilot. This has hmm. gone. There's some weird things here in this in this whole. Yeah. I'll this whole, I want to talk about some stuff here. Okay. First of all, he just now know how important the Zelda is to fans, but he's a lifelong Zelda fan. <laughs> Number one. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. Number two. Why is Sony producing this movie? Well, I thought at first, I thought, when I thought, oh, Nintendo trying to go down Sony's route of making films of your big IP projects. But then I suddenly saw Sony's co financing it. And I'm just like, wow, that's something I didn't expect. I didn't see, yeah, I didn't expect that at all. But it seems they're very much going down that route of. You know, because they've done the Mario movie and mm-hmm. they're, they're going to do the Zelda one. So they're obviously seeing that, you know, Sony's projects are obviously making bank and they want to be involved, but I'm surprised. I mean, are they going to make it like with actors or is it going to be a cartoon or, or what's going on here? For all reports I've seen that it's live action. Yeah, I think it I is mean, actors. Yeah. I don't want to get. I just won't take your... it. Ser- you know what? Will this remind me of? 
You ever see the movie Legend with Tom Cruise? That's what I was going to say. Mm. Legend or is the like, musical he's just, looking for never ending story? It just story. doesn't going to seem they're not going to hit it right at all. You know? Yeah, that's... It's going to fall. you've always got to be careful if you take on someone's, you know, especially a real lead and IP like that, you've you've got to be damn sure you're going to get that bang on. Because if because there's the anything that's Zelda. not quite right, then the fans will be on you straight away. No, it's true. Like, I never felt Zelda was, like, I mean, I love Zelda, don't get me wrong, I, I enjoyed the game, but, like, I never found it to be, like, big boy, bad boy type of hero, you know? Mm, yeah. He just did what was right, very stoic, and he moved on with the, with the, with the journey. Yeah, you got to get the actor it... right as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah. if you go and bring Conor McGregor in as Zelda as a Link, you know, it's gonna, you know, muscle bound. <laughs> are you gonna, yeah, are you gonna make it like PG thirteen? Is it gonna be PG? Yeah. What are you looking for here? It's gonna be very difficult, I think, to get this. Like with Uncharted, they had everything, and they that they didn't do a good job there. That's something but... for the Discord to bring us, by the way. And I, I'm still wrestling this image in my mind. Conor McGregor from the UFC. Yeah, dressed as Link. Yeah, well, he's in because he's quite. He would just look like short, a leprechaun, he? bro. He's quite short, isn't he? So, he would, yeah, that's, that's what it. I mean. That's what I thought like, of him. You see, and I think know? he's in that new. He's in that new Roadhouse film. I think, isn't he? Yeah, I, I want to see that. Someone so, bring me the so, AI of Conor mm-hmm. McGregor <laughs> dressed as Link <laughs> in the new movie poster of Legend of Zelda by Sony. By Sony. Hmm. It's just well, the weirdest thing. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this at all. I guess I need to see a lot more before I judge. Get, get me a but off the bat, to the car wreck. It, I'm not the thing interested. Is, they can't afford for this to be rubbish. This is their probably next to Mario, but as terms of storytelling, their most prestigious title. I mm. think what they should have done is gone down the Mario route because the Mario movie was very enjoyable. But it lends itself now, to being slightly more comedic. No, but I'm not saying like that route, like as far as like comedy, but it was a very good animated picture mm-hmm. and it could take that a bit more serious with certain tones and certain things in the, it's just much <laughs> easier to do, I think, in that kind of style than it would mm-hmm. be for a live action movie, because I don't think they're ever going to get it. I don't know. I just feel like it's not going to be successful. I could be wrong, but that's just me. It's going to cost a lot more money, I think, to make. Big time. If they mm. do genuinely want to live action it and go for like real sets or real locations. Yeah, get Hyrule, get that film as Hyrule and that. Is I mean, I, I, I would like it to be more like Lord of the Rings rather than Legend. And that's what I'm hoping for in this kind mm. of fantasy world that Hyrule is, you know? Mm. It's going to end up looking like Willow. You know what? It's going to look like Willow for NES, not Willow for the arcade. And that's a problem. (laughs) (laughs) RGT, I think that neatly wraps up the news. We didn't do community corrections last week because Bobby and I don't make them. So just wondered if you had any. Um, I will look if you fill. Okay. I will fill by asking Bobby to... Again, please plead with the American listeners. You, yeah. You've spoken quite simply to the to the East Coast. Mm-hmm. I think you need to speak to now to Middle America. How would you ask them politely to to join us on the Discord? In Middle America, you know what? Um, I think I can talk about Chicago because I think Chicago and New York are kind of similar. In you know, we're both big cities. Uh, you know, join Discord. I mean, we need we need some. Midwesterners in the in the Discord as well, you know. Yeah. We could do a whole White Sox Yankees rivalry, Red Wings right New York Rangers rivalry. Let's get it in there, you know. We'll Tigers that. Yankees, let's jump in there, you know. And then still, you know, Bulls, right? All the get them in there, okay. And then the East Coast could take on the West Coast, get some Californians in there, which I've never been to California. What but, would be the best way to get a Californian on the Discord right now? You know, like, I don't know because say to him? I cannot talk. I, I'm not familiar with the West Coast people. Um, 
it's like a what whole East think, Coast just, thing just for me. Your gut. What's your gut telling you you need to say to the people on the West Coast? Because Bobby's gut's normally the right, it's got the right feel. What's my gut telling the West Coast people? Um, you know, let's man up and let's join the Discord and stop over there with your sun and your waves, you know, and come over to the East Side and ex- experience, you know, four seasons of weather, not just two or whatever you got going on over there and join up hold that flag and run forward. I, I don't you know? know if that's controversial or not, but it, it sounded pretty rousing to me. RGT, I hope so. Yes. As soon as we're laying ourselves bare in, in this way, Ron bended knee already. What, what community corrections are you coming at me with? Um, the only one that, that I can think of or find on now, and I don't know if we've covered this or not, is when I got Tinkle Tuner's name wrong. I was calling him Tingle Turner. And I don't know if we've addressed this. But... Thanks to this show and its host's inability to pronounce his various game and related names. Well, my inability. He's changed his name more times than someone in witness protection that keeps going home to look for their sock. Yeah, he keeps changing his name for us to get his name right, and I persistently get it wrong. So my yeah. apologies. In my mind now, he's almost like a Robocop version of Tina Turner. Yeah, I thought in a, it was in, Tingle. It is simply the best era. I kept getting it wrong too because every time I hear the word Tingle, I think of pins and needles, and I'm thinking like he's leaning on his tuner too much. But then I read that wrong as well. Oh, what yeah. you mean a can of tuner? No, like a tuner, like a tuner, like a radio tuner. Like he's leaning on it. It's it's messed up. It's pins oh. and needles. It's I distorted. He was like in like. Like an electric version of, you That's know, com- comes down as a tuner with one of those hats on, lightning coming out of his fingers or yeah, his fins. Like, yeah, like when I first saw Digital Monkery, I thought it was Digital Monkey because, you know, I don't put all the words in. It is Digital Monkey. Yeah, I thought it was Monkery, bro. Oh, well, we know what Community Corrections will be next week. Well, what is it now? I don't mean what is it now. Cinema. Has he what changed his it? name because you couldn't pronounce it? You're such a stirrer. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know exactly. Monkery, what bro. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get pulled in. Yeah. And he, last he week, knows. he knows. I don't know why, but me and Bobby found ourselves in a cupboard with digital monkery. Yeah. How did that come about? I can't remember. Me neither. I did but we crawled the show, in there. But I've, I've seemed to have vaguely missed that part. Oh. Maybe that was an off-air set. <laughs> you know? You pay side. I just distinctly remember being in the cupboard, turning to, turning to Digital Monkey and being like, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah, of course. Fair enough. Maybe it was a dream. I don't know. I thought Maybe. it happened last episode. So. Oh, we'll have to go I mean, it wasn't a nightmare. You know? That's the good part. Have Another you heard all the conspiracy theories about this show, by the way? No? What? People are suggesting that we aren't owned by a Mexican streaming giant. People are suggesting that I didn't live stream from a plane crash. People are suggesting that Tom isn't related to royalty. People are suggesting that he wasn't wrapped up in the Epstein Island scandal. Wow. People are people are suggesting all sorts of things about Ray that I don't Conspiracy want to say out theories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um and people have got themselves very sort of excited about this as people arguing online about what's real and what's not can you believe it really i find it rather ridiculous really wow but you know they're also trying to find out what submarine me and bobby did the e3 debrief from you know was it a submarine or no or was it one of those sort of underwater mule things if so they made it sound bigger than it was why did it have the electronics suite on board and why did that seagull not sound like it was from San Francisco when they're in San Francisco Bay? Mm-hmm. You know, why couldn't you hear the Alcatraz ferry boat? You know, all sorts of weird stuff that, you know. Well, they're really breaking it down to try and uh, try and find yeah. out what's true or not, aren't they? What happened to Gamer mm-hmm. Juice? I mean, it's a whole bunch of nonsense, really. <laughs> gamer <laughs> Juice. Is Gamer, gamer where can juice. I buy Gamer Juice? Is it mm-hmm. real? Like... Scotty too shotty. Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> Scotty too shotty, yeah. It's wild, it's, bro. Yeah. Shotty no. too hotty. Even Scotty Dave. too shotty. I can't remember. What is his name? <laughs> I thought it was Scotty too shotty. Yeah. Or was you it know? Shotty too, too hotty? 
You know, no one even knows anymore at this point. I know there was shots involved. You know, but I think there was two of them. I don't think you know, they're qu- Scott. It's true. <laughs> they've they've been questioning if we were doing the uh, the episodes in Trestle. I don't get it. I don't understand. Really? It's just wild. But to me. anyone yeah. could Google Trestle's restaurant or story and find out it's real. It's right they could there. even see that the address is correct. They can yeah. go in look, there and speak yeah. to the manageress and her name is correct. And if you yeah. go to Street View and you look through the window. Bobby's in there with his. You just see him with his earphones on. No, with Marlon there's not. Next to him. Now this is probably part of the problem because when they go to Street View and look at Trestles, yeah, apparently someone stuck an upside down pentagram in the window, just on a sheet of A4. Really? Yeah. Really? And yeah, someone, really. someone out there, and I don't know who. Is spending the time listening to every episode. You know that random interference. I'm doing the mm-hmm. thingy. Apparently, if you write down the word that precedes the random interference that is in over a hundred episodes, it spells out some sort of cryptic message. Well, what if allegedly, you maybe allegedly to some form of either death mm-hmm. or treasure. Wow, is do you have it's to a buy fine backwards, line. Sort of Beatles records or? I don't think back. I don't think I've seen anyone mention backwards online. Oh, okay. So you just, you just. But maybe that's where they'll get to with it. Mm. We're under attack. Apparently, and now I've got nothing to do with this one. If you look at the bottom of the lunar lander, there's a copy of the series two album art sticker on the bottom of the lunar lander in the moon videos. No. Yeah. Wow. JFK was shot. This is going quite deep now. Because the driver pressed some buttons on his stereo and they're all laughing along to the um, Batlog of Shame episode. No. The second gunman. A lot of conspiracies here. The second gunman, alleged, was listening Mm -hmm. to the latest Ponzi's uh, award ceremony. No. I don't start wow. these. I'm just reporting what I've seen. Bobby, what's no. the latest UCB conspiracy theory you've seen? That Stingray's not a real man. Mm. All right. That's ridiculous. And they're so saying that he's near his car. They're saying that Stingray's just my neighbor Dave, which is not true. Dave is his own person. <laughs> well, he's a taxi Dave driver. Has his, yeah. I mean, it's Stingray's not Dave. But they got to knock this off, you know? He's, then they think. Hand, then they think. I don't even live in New York. It's crazy. Well, I have seen some people suggest that me and you didn't record our shows from New York at one point in time as well. Yeah, really ridiculous. <laughs> what is wrong with people? What are these people going to think when they get really deep in the back catalogue and they hear me and OG Tom travel in time through the medium of... St- st- well, uh, oh, that'll be the next thing. Oh, you haven't got a flux capacitor. Yeah, well, which is ridiculous. We obviously have. Yes, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's in a Nissan Bluebird. I mean, I'm I'm still recovering from the plane crash before Christmas. Mm, you still you still well, got that limp. Yeah, where I ended up on Christmas Island. Yeah. And bizarrely, yeah. there was Tom. Yeah. You know, with with coincidences do happen. I mean, how many phone booths do you know on Farmington? Yeah. Let's come on. Exactly. Well, there's one There's one near the wagon that's now a defib, and then there's one at the top of the village that's still, it's still a phone. Still works? Yeah, I think so. You don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to put in too many keys on the defib one there. It should end up with quite a shock, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> one near the wagon that's a defib. <laughs> Well, they want to turn the one at the top into a library. <laughs> I don't know what that's then, all about. It's just, I mean, it's and just I went, crazy. I went in there the other day and they had a water bowl for dogs. I got it splashed all up my ankle. It's a foam box, for God's sake. Oh, it's ridiculous. So, you know, as, things, as details like this, it proves that, you know, everything's true. I mean, 211 episodes. Just go back and just play mm. it and just... Some Listen people, to what's not being some heard. Some people are saying that this show lightly masquerades as a gaming show 
so it's able to be used as a cover on worldwide available podcasting apps and supplanted within it is a code for a terrorist cell (laughs) that we are just here as a cover for that we're paid handsomely that's why no one's ever really heard of us the discord's all a bit of a Mm -hmm. myth and distraction there's not actual real people in there they're all ai bots i mean get sam's get sam fisher on the case so I suppose they're saying our oh, Lincoln Meetup was all AI pictures, was it? I mean, you well, yeah, AI is wild. What the now infamous nibble twist was AI, was it? Mm-hmm. Wow, that was a real deal thing. Someone yeah. said that the I can assure you at work, real origin photo on. of that it was quietly a little bit more vicious because your head's been stuck on a female listener's body. I can see why they'd think that. But that's not true. <laughs> Look, these, are, these are wild times we're living, man. Yeah. I don't even know what's real anymore, if I'm honest Nor with do you. I. One I thing that I do real. know is for real, and we can refute all claims it is not real, because in a moment you're going to hear his <laughs> car, and it's some bluebird, and it's got a very distinctive exhaust note, and I don't think anyone can claim that it's changed in any of the episodes he's been in. So how can that be fake? Exactly. It's ridiculous. Prove us wrong. Yeah. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot, what's nestled between some counterfeit nappies and a dodgy copy of Battle Friend all this week. These are the new release highlights for the week, March 25th to March 31st, 2024. Listen to these around the digital or physical will be, by the time this podcast in your feed, but could be region dependent. Spring stop, wow, whoa. He is furious this week. He's come out at me. I'll tell you what I'm seeing because it's actually quite scary. Mm. He's wearing a T-shirt that says, ready to believe. On top of his blonde mullet, he's got a hat. It's a New York Yankees hat because it's the most faint sporting good in the world. But he's fashioned it out of foil. (laughs) For his trousers, he's wearing what can only be called holographic fish scale Skin tight leggings. Uh, wow, holographic. That's is that a moose knuckle or? Perhaps. Oof, okay. Moose knuckles. There's yeah. serious right there. Yeah, so I've raised rocking, so I don't know what's going on. Um, for his shoes, he's wearing Mumsy's stilettos. I look at Wayne and Wayne's come dressed as Book Rogers' robot, Twinkie. Really bad. RGT. <laughs> In fact, I think everyone just heard him. RGT, yeah. how are you seeing the Ray family this week? Let's refute. Let's just get well, it out there. He's real. Yes, he is real. Um, but he's looking odd. He's... He's looking like a very rough and haggard teenage Spyro. Um, okay. Oddly, he's still got the mullet, but it's just slightly alight where he's now got his full flame capacity and he's gently coughed and to set his little mullet alight. Um, yeah, and he's, yeah, he looks very, very strong. I don't even know how he got out of the Bluebird. And then Wayne... Looks just like he's got a beard, but he looks like Conor McGregor is Link, but he's only two foot six. And he's trying to start a fight with anyone. He's punched Spyro. He's trying to kick Machete. He's shot up. He's two six now. (laughs) Yeah, he's trying to fight anyone. I mean, he's now got Mummy RGT in a headlock and he's just power slammed her over the washing line. He's just gone crazy. Absolutely crazy. But I can't take him seriously because he is dressed as Link, so it's a bit odd. But yeah, they've definitely taken it to the extremes this week. I heard, I you, I heard down at Playgroup, he's been referring to his uh, Master Sword as the Big Boner. Yeah, apparently he's been waving that about all over the place. So, so I hear. 
they've had to have a word with the uh, headmistress a few times because she's going to have someone's eye out with that. Well, I'll tell you, speaking of boners, my man <laughs> is over here looking like a very physically dominating, very muscular body. But normally when you have your briefs, you know, you guys call them, you know, maybe underwear. There's none. Pants. Yeah, no, there's no pants, brother. This is underwear. And they ain't underwear. It's you know, a very large appendix. And it's going between his legs, up and around his back. And at the very end of that appendix is little Wayne going out there, you know, just throwing all types of vulgarities and all types of nonsense out there. <laughs> they're, they're on wild. They're definitely on some kind of cocaine, but they're together. <laughs> Yeah. You know, he also probably wants to start a fight, but he can't because he has to be together, you know? Like, wow. if that bad boy comes underneath under the legs again, it's probably about another three feet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the conspiracy theories are going to be wild this week. So basically, you're seeing Sting dressed in a slightly more adult version of the, of, of the darkness, the video game. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, that's that's uh that's pretty good. Like muscular man, you know, good handsome, good looking. You cannot lie. You cannot look at the appendix because uh he's so good looking. But then you just take a little gander down south. And you're like, oh my god, what is this? It's like another little half a person attached to you, brother. That gander down south is it like a quick like? Half a millisecond eyes drop, like oh, he's packing, and then an eyes up again, or is it nah, like a down bro. and stare? Or you're you're staring at it. I mean, the girth of this thing's got to be three three feet. This dude's walking boat legged, you know. <laughs> anyway, first out of the boot, Ray, give me this. Yeah. <laughs> You look at you see now I'm seeing you because I don't know how you just pass that to Bobby. And you know what? It's not even <laughs> Sting is not even oh, no. giving the video games out right now. Okay. <laughs> Wayne came from the back, back through the legs, and is passing out all types of stuff <laughs> on the back of the trunk. I feel a bit disturbed from this. Little hands can't even grip him, but he's just wow. gonna hold him like he has like spatula hands. It's just wild, bro. It's like a wild scene movie. over here, man. That's actually <laughs> haunting that image. Absolutely Oof. haunting. So that puts a whole new connotation how I, how I was handed South Park Snow Day comes out on PC, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox Series X. It's covered in some in uh, March 26. Play as the new kid in South Park and join Cartman, Stan, Carl, and Kenny in three dimensional glory to celebrate the most magical day in any young child's life a snow day. Hmm. Uh, next out, Planet Zoo, PS5, My Xbox mommy, mommy. Series X. Uh, March 26th, build a world for wildlife in Planet Zoo from the developers of Planet Coaster and Zoo Tycoon comes the ultimate zoo sim. Construct details, habitats, uh, manage your zoo and meet authentic living animals who think, feel, and explore the world you create around them. Yeah, I don't want to rock the boat that. here, but isn't this already on Xbox and has been for years? I don't know. Is this is this the one? Oh no, we played when we went to WASD. We played the was it no? The we we played one? something like Coasters Wild, and it was a more extreme version of Planet Coaster, if you remember. Planet Zoo is made by the people that make Elite Dangerous and all that. But and it's been on PC it. for a while because I think my daughter is this on PC. I honestly thought it was an Xbox One launch title almost. Oh, really? I don't know about that, to be honest. I don't know. I might be wrong. Message in, in the Discord. If you're American and we've made an egregious thing or you want to, to apologise for the un-American things that we may have said, come in the Discord and I'll apologise to you person and video. Don't do it. Don't come and defend your country's honour and we will continue to speak badly about it. All right? Exactly. Now, this is like a tearjerker to me. I don't know. I feel like this could be a sad game. Okay, It's called Open Roads. Mm. It's on PC, PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox. March 28th. Uh, long lost family secrets. Hints of a hidden fortune. And miles to go before they sleep. 
Tess divine relationship with her mom has never been easy, but they're about to set out together on a journey into the past that they'll never forget. If your name was Tess Divine, yeah, as a God-given birthright, mm-hmm. do you think it would be sensible to explore a career in adult films? A hundred percent, they get the same thing. And if least not that, a definitely worldwide stripper. Mm. It's just, it's perfect, well, isn't it? You know, that's really we're gonna going go, for me. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go. We you know we want to go today, boys. The vines, baby. I can guarantee the, the person who ripped that bump about that game never expected that outcome. And I bet no other game and podcast has come up with that. I thought the same thing. So we're on the same wavelength. Though. <laughs> so that time both sitting there in Google New York and testifying. Mm-hmm. Which did happen. This one, um, is it me again? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. So this is... Uh, Simulator, um, a simulator game <laughs> for RGT's nighttime activities. It's Pepper Grinder on the Nintendo Switch, March 28th. <laughs> oh, dear me. Why are you saying that? Pepper Grinder is an action packed 2D adventure blending traditional platforming <laughs> with an alternative dating mode that allows you to dive in and out of the scene like a dolphin swimming through water. That's my mummy, mummy. <laughs> An alternate drilling mode? I mean, where are we going with this game, man? Oh, I changed it. It does say alternate drilling mode. Yeah. That allows you to dive in and out like a dolphin swims through water. Just like Test of Line, baby. De- <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's definitely my uh, mummy, mummy. Oh, driver. when I made the episode, do you think I got the descriptions the wrong way around? <laughs> Oh, who knows? Uh, anyway, which one's your mummy, mummy? Pepper grinder. Of course, it had to be. I see be. it's on the not safe for work platform as well. NS. Yeah, it's got to be anything that's got an alternate driller mode. I'm all over. Yeah, it. you know you got to try that out, regardless. Well, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm rocking up on on legs akimbo for Planet Zoo. Uh, Bobby, what's your mummy, mummy? Uh, the complete season of Dexter. No. <laughs> At least. That raised boot the game. Oh, I just said, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I was thinking about something. I was I was three seconds ahead in the future. Uh, Pepper Grinder. Okay. Definitely. And Ray, Ray Bizarrely has handed me um, a copy of Dexter for you. Yeah. yeah what is not. a white hole? Uh, it's the opposite of a black hole. Okay. <laughs> RGT, what's your mummy, mummy? Yes. Um, uh, mummy, mummy or VHS? Your mummy, mummy, VHS. My mummy, mummy, VHS. Right. Well, my VHS is going to be K Pax. I thought I'd already done this one, but Mrs. RGT assures me I haven't. But yeah, K Pax. Everyone looks completely lost by that film. Yeah, I don't know what K Pax is, man. Um, it's got, um, uh, I can't remember his name now. He was the guy who was in the Big Lebowski. Um, what's his name, the actor's name? Um, but anyway, he's... Jeff Bridges. He, yeah, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. And he, 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 he's obviously human, but he claims he's an alien and he's seeing a psychiatrist and that's whether he actually is an alien or not or whether he's just having an episode, mental episode, and you have to decide whether he's an alien or not. Um, it's quite interesting, yeah, and I remember enjoying that film so I want to watch that again so yeah Capex he did a lot of interesting movies like Starman that was a good one yeah he Mm. did Harvey Retro is he typecast as an alien masquerading as a human well I mean he did a few alien movies I don't know Mm. maybe so your mummy mummy is Dexter yeah you happy with that gotta be wife wants to watch it so happy wife happy life can I what? Good job, Ray had it. Yeah, it did. He did. He did. And yeah, I'm very excited about this. Well, he's handed me two fake copies of what looks like a spin off from The Office with Jim and Pam on the front called A Quiet Place and A Quiet Place 2. Mm-hmm. Mm. See what comes of that. 
Mm. Enjoyable. To see a little enjoying. bit more office going on. So, yeah, happy with that. Ray's gone. All that's left on the floor is what looks like a teenage copy of Play Dragon. Play Dragon, like... Starring Test of Eye. Hmm. Dirk Diggler. Test of Flame. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Gentlemen, now he's gone. The only thing that's left for me to ask you is um, if you're American and you're not in the Discord, why? And then secondly, these gentlemen, what are you hoping to play for this gaming week? Um, obviously expeditions. I'll be putting more hours into that. Um, more um, Agatha Christie, I think. Been enjoying that as a little chill out game and just relax, work the mysteries out. And it's probably going to be mostly those two, probably a bit more retro. Um, as it's a couple of bank holidays this week, well, this week and the following week, I'm probably going to have a bit of a shed night, a few crafties and a few retro games. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much me for the week. What I think. are we doing episode wise over Easter? I don't know what you want to do. Or even what are you discussing doing? it on air. <laughs> well, because we like to reward the fans. Are we going to give them a... Are we going to give them a double header? We could do a double header. And we could do an episode based off religious games. Are you writing that one? <laughs> I can get the game together and we can free flow it fine I'm up for it wow uh, we're, we're not going to make promises because it's a busy time for everyone with families and everything but we, if we can reward you with a little bit of extra summing summing like the like the UCP version of an audio version of a chocolate easter egg mm-hmm. we'll give you that mm. if you good boys if you mm. behave, let's put it this way. America's on the naughty step. If it doesn't do its job and get in the Discord, no one. And when I say when I'm, when I want America in the Discord, I mean every single last living person in that country. If they don't have the app and are on the Discord by tonight, no one's getting an Easter present from the UCP. So they're they're literally punishing everybody else by their selfish actions. Because this yeah. is how you be this is how you build camaraderie in the forces. You punish everyone for the weakest person's activity. Simple. Wow. We're getting strict here. It's time. It's time. We move to New York. We've got two American co hosts. What's wrong with these guys? Mm. Yeah, we're doing all we can. And if they yeah, come, we're doing, we're they trying, get the man. chance to earn $50 as well. Mm. What's the issue? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And many Is other game podcasts giving that away. We even give them specific American office episodes as well. Mm. Without any dirty English in there. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. Is it now, I mean, if they've waited this long, we won't imagine they're a pretty loyal fan and they've got one hell of a tolerance for pain. Mm-hmm. Would, would now be the time to kind of run the ideas for the tears past people once we get out the early adopter uh, issuing, once we've issued all the early adopter packs and they're in process, people. We've got the list of tapes, we've got the T-shirts, we've got all the gizmos coming or en route. And yeah. We need to then transition from early adopters to a, a more acceptable tier policy, RGT. Are you ready to share that with people, or are they going to have to wait? No, we can uh, we can do it this week, and then after Easter, we'll start start rolling out the um, the tiers as they as we do them. If you know what I mean. Okay, so- let's just say tier one, three dollars. I rock up to the UCP disc uh, the, to the UCP support page mm-hmm. available when you click on the episode at the bottom. It says support show. It takes you through to a nice, clean uh, po- our podcasting host, Buzzsprout, where you can subscribe a certain amount of money. For £3 a month, what are they going to get? 
um, obviously you'll get access to a Discord. I know everyone does, but you also get your name read out in the show every week. Mm. Okay. Next tier up is five pounds. Or five dollars so, actually. So it actually works yeah. out a better deal for the Europeans and the British. Yes. Yes. But the Americans uh, are just paying the money they know. Yeah. So for five dollars you obviously get your um name read out in the show every week. Obviously, you get the Discord access and you'll also get our um yearly art merchandise when we change our art. So you'll get a piece of merchandise for our new artwork. Oh. That's mm. nice. That's nice. Yeah, which we vary up in different things, which will either be... Okay, let me think about this. Was that $5? So I'm now rocking up. I've got $8 burning a hole in my pocket. It's basically two bodega coffees. It's nothing. And every every week you're going to get an episode of the show. You get asked to this good. What am I going to get for $8? What, what's that going to get me? $8 is the same as your, your, your $5. So you get read out, you get your yearly album art, and you also get unlocked to the unglorious chat, which is a sectioned off chat in the Discord. Oh, mm. private area for people yeah, to get private to. area. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's just say I want to show my maximum amount of love to the UCP, and I've got $10 burning a hole in my back pocket. What yeah. might I get? Um, if you go down the ten dollar route, which is amazing, if you do, and anyone who has is fantastic. I mean, we appreciate everyone for putting money for it, and we know Literally times are hard. I mean, anybody. So anyone who goes from three, five, eight to ten is fantastic. But for ten, you'll obviously get your name read out. Um, you get your yearly album art. You get unlocked to the glorious chat. Plus, you get a quarterly Zoom chat with us. So that'll either be one, two, three, four of us, one of us, two of us, three of us. But we'll do a um, quarterly chat. Live Zoom chats. You can chat. Come on there. Talk about your game collection. Talk about gaming. Talk about movies. Talk about anything you want with us. But you can uh, see our ugly mugs and have a have a bit of a chat with us as well. But picture the scene. I love the show, <laughs> mm, and I don't have any spare change. Does that mean I have to stop listening to the show? No, not at all. Show's always free. The show's always on Spotify, it's on your app, iTunes, it's on everything. The show will always be there to listen to. The uh, Discord is always there. But if you, all, all we're basically saying is by supporting the show, which we're so grateful for, we're going to give you that little bit back. So there's a little something extra to say thanks for, for what you've done. Do this, so the show's free and always will be. Mm-hmm. But if you want to support, there's your tier levels. Get on board. Mm-hmm. Yep. We need to move the silent but violence, especially the American silent but violence, into the family. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. you two have been quite aggressive and horrible. And I think what I want to do is extend maybe a hand of friendship to our American yes. cousins. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. I, I see what you two do. I see you call them out and you slap them. You make I'm... references to their history and all that sort of stuff. Don't... I heard you at the beginning. I don't know if that was nice. us. I don't, don't believe that was us, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby slandered a couple of American brothers at least twice. RGT, what you said. Hopefully, because I'm going to have to pay the money, is in the edit on the Reddit room floor. Because I'll be honest with you, most wow. of my stuff will probably stay in wow. said you, but not, you are such, not racist. You but are. what you said, that four no, hour can't defend in the of this Zoom call. Just, are you absolute? Oh, God, I can't swear. If you think I'm lying and you've got your angry and you, you, you're driving down the back streets of LA and you want to get in contact and say stop bullying RGT, join the Discord. So I can't hear you. Yep. Yep. Stop if you also want RGT. me to sack him for being so anti American, it literally made me sob. Well, I don't think I was anti American, but. We wouldn't be here right now if we weren't for Americans. There'd be no internet. And without Joe Rogan inventing Spotify and podcasts, we wouldn't even be on the air on air right now. Nope. So, no, I agree with you. So I never said nothing wrong, but we're well, going to make no, it. Well, no, I've paid to have it edited out. You are. <laughs> you're something else, you are. <laughs> and the best and bit about it is, is the amount of money that spot. we're going to pay for this edit, it'll be seamless. No one even know it was in there. Thank you. Whatever. <laughs> add, that to the, add that to the conspiracy theories. RGT's uh, in the Ku Klux Klan. 
Uh, excuse me. My God. I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out. I'm ruined. I'm ruined. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that the Americans know what the truth is and what truth smells like, and they're going to come right into your aid in the Discord. I hope so. Someone needs to. Yeah, Lord. Hash- yeah, please. Yeah. Hashtag free RGT. This is a character assassination. This is. He's being, he's being detained in the dog cage somewhere. <laughs> Again. <laughs> That's probably slightly edgy. It's probably going to get me at least two complaints for that. I will apologise. But my main aim was to get our American cousins here. Hopefully we've stirred enough of a response in them to fire them up. Well, I hope so. Did we get distracted? Because I don't know if we did what you've been playing or no. Uh, what are you hoping to play, uh, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've done what I'm hoping to play. Yeah, uh, I was then going to hand over to Bobby before you went on this tirade of <laughs> destroying me live on air. Um, so as it is my last ever show, um, <laughs> what are you hope to play, Bobby? Um, I have a few uh, still low poly horror game from Pup- Pup- Combo. I have downloaded, I think, Murder House and a couple other ones I have. But I'm going to continue with uh, Robocop. Rogue City, mm-hmm. and then uh, Hell Divers too. P- pretty much, that's it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, and I have uh, I bought Rise of Ronin. Oh, so mm. I actually may buy that. Uh, jump on that instead of Spider Man Two. I'm not sure, but yeah. I want a picture for the. I want a video in the Discord of you unboxing it for the seal, unsealing it for the seal master. Yeah, I uh, I'm gonna send him a DM, you know, just to get a little awareness, and then uh, rip it open. Oh dear, I've been tears. Did you hear last week what happens to the seal master when he gets when <clears throat> he has a seal is broken somewhere in the world? Yes. How do you feel about that? Um, it started off slightly strange that it's almost like a wax and for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And then I started thinking, actually, I feel quite sorry for him because of how many items that are probably unsealed at one moment. He's just in perpetual agony for the rest of his life while he's yeah. just having this out-of-body, complete wax experience while people Mate, are unseen in games. Most of, my visions, most of my visions are kind of like that, though, aren't they, really? You, you, oh, you start God, off yes. and then you feel sorry for the, for the person. Mm. I mean, but in a way, you know, he kind of causes his own misery. Why? You don't have to keep it sealed. Yeah, but he's, he's the seal master. I What's know. That's what I'm saying. If he, that's if what I'm he, saying. If... He likes to keep things preserved. Yeah. It's really, you know. How can he I change just wanna... that? He can't. That's his attempt. That's his personality. So he has to, he has to bear with the issue of the pain. <laughs> when somebody else unseals There's Bobby gets, Fix. Just deal with it. You know, he takes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Feel? Oh man, it feels horrible. I'm sure. There you go. But you know, uh, wow. What am I? What were you going to play? Open to play. Um, some MLB. I need to properly tear deep into that. And I want to just keep plodding on with Yakuza through the medium of Portal or anything else, really. Um, I keep flicking through my back catalogue trying to find something that's very portalish, and I keep settling on Little Big Workshop. But you know, those who know me may or may have may have yeah, on occasion have. played the wheels off that. I was yeah. also thinking I've got myself clean from Anno, but I was thinking that would be a really great portal game. Oh god, I think it'd be too small. <laughs> oh, you know, god help me! I saw the DLC on sale as well. Oh, oh no, say. it's just cosmetic though, isn't it? That's the only downside with it. I want new stuff to do in the game. Stop or teasing a new me game? with a new... <laughs> How dare you? Every time you play a new version of Anno... It's 3,000 it? hours, not enough. Yeah, I mean, you did everything you could possibly do. Yeah. So, time to move on. Apart from playing on the portal. Yeah. So, I'll play it on the portal. Totally new experience. Uh, Full DLC, the lot. Good Bobby. I tell you what, since post-operation, he's a man that walks around that just looks like he's 
permanently wearing a filter, one of the social filters. He looks great. He's gorgeous, isn't he? He Thank is. That. Just in awe of him. I want to walk around New York with him. Like, yeah, that's my dude there. Thank you. I'm, I know it. this guy. Yeah. I'm friends Look, with him. Look, again, after, you, after you've destroyed me, I don't think I'd be quite welcome in America at the moment, but... No, nah, we'll settle that. You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be well, fine. after that tirade, that's probably cost me another four grand to cut out. I probably ought to say that's all we have time for this week. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do a shout out before I'm completely destroyed, unless you edit it out. Who do um, you want to do a shout out for? I'm just helping someone out. Thank you very much. Just be quiet. Get back in your chair. Um, there's a new store opened in my local town called Retro Revival. And I said, I'd Hang give on. a shout out. Oh, you can give him the full shout I out. I knew you'd interrupt. Go on then. <sighs> is he in the Discord? He is joining the Discord. So you're doing oh, you're doing it early. Ooh, you've got a lot of faith in this chap. I have, yes. Um, he will be in the Discord, yes. But anyway, Retro Revival is in my local hometown. He sells online as well. He's got an online store, great little store. It's a hard time everywhere, financially at the moment, so I thought I'd give him a shout out, give him a little bit of a bump. So if you like all your game and tat and all your bits and pieces, he's got everything, numbskull quarter arcades, right up to Sega Saturn hoodies. Uh, he's got oh, wow. baseball ca- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle baseball caps. He's got Fatal Fury baseball caps. He's got... He, he's yeah. got, in the flesh, the quarter arcades. Very well priced. Yes, wow. yes he has. He's, he's got a, a deal with numbskull. So he's even got quarter arcade carpets, it's got the little plug socket stickers. It's got the wallpaper to make your own quarter-sized arcade. It's got all the bits and pieces. So, yeah, he's very, very good little little shop. So give him a look, even if you... Well, one know, thing I would say about the quarter cool. arcades is they're not really done justice till you've seen them. Mm, they are absolutely but The chance brilliant. to actually go down to Retro Revival mm-hmm. and see one, not online, in the flesh, with the accessories. yeah. yeah. That's game changing. That's what I call amazing service. I even saw. Have you seen they've done the um, the Pepsi machine? Yeah. And you plug it in. That lights up. You press a button. The little Pepsi machine go all in the proper size into the machine. One thing I didn't realise as well well is you can plug a controller into those quarter arcades. I I didn't know that either. I was reading someone the other day, and it came up, and I was like, "Well, that's game changing." That's gone from being trying to play with a map pin and a couple of ants heads and turned it into something that's probably doable. That's incredible. I didn't know you could do that. Pretty cool. Wow. You learn something every day. Anyway, yeah. I read there was a socket on the back, a USB or something like that. Hmm. Wow, amazing. I didn't know that either. This is where it transpires it's wrong. Community corrections for next week, listeners, but you know, I'm sure I read it and I said it was a dream. I, I suppose if I'm going to spend money cutting store. something out, we ought to cut out your racist tirades and leave the ones in where I make myself sound like I don't know what video games are. You say I don't make sacrifices. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, so anyway, back on track. Retro Revival, uh, Suffolk-based shop. Look them up. You can buy online. Give them a bit of support. And you never know in the future, you might even have a bit of UCP merch in there. So... We'll, we'll see how things go. But yeah. Official a physical dope. stockist of the UCP merchandise. Yeah, might line. well be. Might well be. So wow. we'll see. If That's he gets dope. enough love in there from UCP members, then we'll we'll maybe we'll uh, we'll do something there. So. That is pretty cool. Hmm. He, he, he could do something to fall back on, really, couldn't he? Yeah. I mean, because they'll be queuing up for a George T-shirt or a Bobby T-shirt or a Seb. I mean, probably not an RGT one, especially now, um, but... You know, oh, you've opened up an old new demographic. <laughs> anyway, let's move off that subject. I'm going to give one shout out to my wife. What the hell? It's our anniversary today. It's been 15 years. Oh, wow. You've recorded on your anniversary. I sure He's did. An He's hardcore. So he rolls. Oh, my God. Yeah. Look at this. Because man. now with the surgery, so we had our anniversary dinner the week before the surgery. Mm-hmm. Because I could, I couldn't eat really anything. I'm only on just like soft foods, so uh, I'm gonna make her food, but I'm gonna have peanut butter and jelly. It is what it is, you know. Peanut butter and jelly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you think blueberry you could jelly. run yourself to a foot massage or? So no, normally that's a jelly. that's an everyday thing for her. 
I, I, get, I get one of those every day. And you've not, mm. you've been able to keep doing this even with her. You've had your midriff cut wide open. Yeah, this thing, because I'm very fidgety. So she knows that and takes advantage of it, you know? Mm. So basically so sticks a foot, a foot kicks yeah, the shoulder out your arms there it and is, leaves you a know? foot there. Next thing I know, I just got a foot on my lap. All right, here's a little massage for like an hour or two while I watch a TV show. An hour or two? Yeah, oh yeah, I just, uh, oh, God. I get into it, you know? You're awesome, Bobby. I try. So, 15 years, it's crazy, but... No, congratulations. Thank you, man. That is very much worth celebrating. Congratulations to you both. Thank you to you both for making the sacrifice to come on air. Uh, I'm sorry I've probably insulted your countrymen, but, you know, once we all reunite as a happy family, we'll be okay. All right? We'll be all right. We'll mm. be okay. RGT, anything else to impart before we head our separate ways? No, just uh, it's great to be back. Well, it was until I've been absolutely destroyed on here. So it's going to be interesting. Not really. I mean, you know, I've alluded um, to cutting out some rants, which we they know we haven't got the money to cut out anyway, because based on the last 211 episodes, editing isn't our strong point. So they know that was a prefabricated myth. Well, I, that, well, that is until they You're not even now. real anyway. If so they it's cut an off AI the show. conversation for a communication for a terrorist cell. You're not helping. Um, yeah, so uh, it was good to be back. So uh been great chatting to you guys. So, um, yeah, have a, have a good Easter, everyone. <laughs> Marvellous. Bobby, is there anything else you want to share? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the AI algorithm knew you were going to say no. <laughs> Yep. He was actually <laughs> defended he was actually defended me then, but George is edited it out, so you're never gonna hear it. Wow, the most edited episode ever. Yeah. The lengths he goes to to make me look bad. Wow. Yeah, well, you know. I don't even do you know, I can't afford any more editing, so we'll leave it there. That's all we have time for this week. Listeners, always thank you for your time. Look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. Remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. Remember that RGT when you're in the Guantanamo Bay face down. It's what you do with that situation that counts. Yeah, thanks for that. No worries. See you guys. Bye. Peace.